From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders around the globe, these are Cloud Native Insights. Welcome to another episode of Cloud Native Insights. I'm your host, Stu Miniman, and of course, with Cloud Native Insights, uh, we'll really help uh, understand you know, where we have gone from cloud, how we're taking advantage of innovation, a real driver for what happens uh, in the spaces, of course, developers. You think back to the early days, it was often developers that were grabbing a credit card, using cloud services, um, and then it had to be integrated into what was being done in the rest of the organization. So I saw the large rise of DevOps and all the other pieces around that that help bring in things like security and finance and the like. Uh, happy to welcome to the program, first time guest, William Jonsson. He is the CEO of Delta Blue, uh, deep in this discussion of, of cloud native. Uh, Delta Blue is a European company helping with uh, continuous deployment across uh, cross-cloud providers uh, in the space. Uh, William, thanks so much for joining us. Nice to see you. Glad to go to the show. Thank you, Stu. <clears throat> All right, so uh, one of the reasons I'm glad to have you on on some of the early episodes here, uh, you know, we're, we're discussing, you know, really what cloud native is and what it should be. Uh, my first interview on the program, Ute Piskar, who you know, uh, ha yes. had given the analogy and said, you know, when you talked about DevOps, DevOps isn't something you could buy. Uh, but it's something that lots of vendors would try to sell you. Um, and we're trying to dispel, you know, lots of companies out there, they're like, oh, cloud native. Well, we support Kubernetes and we have this tool and you should buy our cloud native, you know, A, B, C, or D. So, you know, why don't I start a little first with, you know, what you see out there uh, and, you know, what, what you think uh, the ultimate goal uh, and an outcome of, 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 of cloud native should be. I think cloud native, to start with your last question, I think cloud native should uh, make life fun again. Uh, we have a lot of technical problems. Uh, we solve them in technical things. You mentioned Kubernetes. The Kubernetes is solving a technical problem and introducing another technical problem. So what I think cloud native should do is uh, focus on what you're actually good at. So a developer should develop, uh, someone from the infrastructure should, and operating should focus on their key points uh, and not try to mix up. So uh, not Kubernetes. Kubernetes is again sort of introducing another technical issue. Our view on cloud native is that uh, people should have fun again and should be focusing on what they're good at. And uh, so it's not about technology. It's about getting the procedures right and focusing on the things you love to do. And not well Talk to the cross-border, talk to uh, let a developer solve operational kind of things. That's, uh, that's what we try to solve. That's our view of cloud native. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll poke that a little bit because one thing you say, you know, people should do what they're good at. It's really, you yes. know, what is important for the business? What do we need to get done? There's often new skills yes. that we need to do. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's really great if we could just keep doing the same thing we're doing. We know how to do it. We optimize it. We, we play with all of our geek knobs. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, the, 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 the drumbeat that I hear is, you know, we need to be agile. We need to be able to create new applications. IT needs to be responsive mm -hmm. for the business. Um, and rather than in the past it was about you know building this beautiful stack that we could optimize and build these pieces together today uh, the analogy I hear more is you know there's layers out there there's lots of different tooling especially if you look at the developer world uh, there there is just you know there, there's too many options out there um, so you know maybe bring us a little bit as to you know what Delta blue does um, how you look at uh, you know, allowing developers to build what they, the new things that they need, um, but not be, I guess the word, you know, locked into a certain place or certain technology. Yes, uh, I've been on IT for 20 years, so I've seen a lot of things going on. <clears throat> and um, when we started out with Delta Blue, the only thing we had in mind is how could we make the life cycle of applications and all the things you had to do, the government around applications, way more easy. Uh, back in the days, we already saw that containerization solved some of the issues, but it solved technical issues. So, like when you start coding, you don't need to code to the network uh, card anymore. We took the same approach to our cloud native approach. So, we started on, on the top level. Uh, we started with applications in mind. And the things uh, back in the days you had Bitnami already had the, uh, the option to have a VM or a, 
a standard installation of an application. So what we see is that nowadays uh, many developers and many organizations try to focus on that specific part, how to get your code into some kind of containerization solution. We take that for granted. There are so many great solutions out there already tried to solve that problem. So instead of reinventing that wheel again, we take that for granted. But we take another approach. We think that if the application is there, you need to test it. You need to take it into production. You want to have several versions of a specific application into the production environment. So what we try to solve with our platform is to make that part of the life cycle, so let's call it the horizontal version of your application life cycle, not getting an application built or running up and that kind of stuff. We take that for granted. So we take the horizontal approach, how to get your traditional application from your development environment to your testing, acceptance, let's let different kind of people test your application, security testing, before you take it into production. And that should be all be done from a logical point of view. So we build one web interface, a logical portal, and you can simply drag and drop any type of application, not just a modern uh, microservice oriented uh, or Kubernetes based application, but any type of application from your acceptance environment to your production environment. That's going to solve the real problem. So now any business can have 10 different acceptance environments for even your old legacy SAP or your intershop environment. And that's going to add the business value. So going back to your definition of cloud native, getting that kind of abstraction between getting your and encoding your application and getting it somewhere up and running and all the steps that needs to be done from your development environment into the production environment, that's going to add the business value. That's going to speed up your time to market. That's going to make sure that you have a better code quality because now you can test uh, even your legacy application from different 10 different points of view and 10 different types of different branches all in a parallel environment. So when we started with Delta Blue, we took the different approach, took the technical stuff for granted and focused on all the government around applications. And the governance, that's the thing, uh, I think that's the most important part in the cloud native discussion. So governance, especially in Europe, uh, you know, has, uh, has, has a lot of importance there. Uh, if you could, you know, bring us inside a little bit, you know, customers you're talking to, you know, where they are in, in this journey. Uh, you know, if you've got an example of something, you know, you, you're, you're doing specifically, would, would love to hear, uh, you know, how that happens in the real world. Uh, yes, we have many different customers, but I think one of our best examples, for example, is William & Thompson a big e-commerce party uh, across the globe, but also here in the Netherlands. Um, we made a blueprint of their development environment, the way they develop applications and the way they host applications. So now they start a new project, uh, 40 developers coding a new big e-commerce application. In the past, everyone had to install their own Intershop environment on their own laptop. Uh, Java, Oracle, that kind of stuff that took me a day and a half. Since we abstracted that into like a simple file, like you would do in any serverless environment nowadays, they can now simply click on a button. And since they made their laptop or their develop development environment part of our uh, uh, platform, they can now simply drag and drop the complete Intershop environment to the laptop and they can send development in 10 minutes instead of a day and a half. So just the first step. That makes their life easier. But also, imagine uh, we have an application up and running for uh, two or three months, and there's a security patch. We all know the trouble of getting a patch installed in production, but also then installed into the acceptance environment, test environment, development environment, all those kind of different versions. With our platform, since we have the application in mind, we can, with simple one simple click of the button, we can propagate that security patch across all the different environments. So from a developer point of view, there's no need to have any kind of knowledge. Of course, they need to configure a port or something like that, but no need of knowledge of any type of infrastructure anymore. We have made the same blueprint for the complete development DTAP environment. So with a single big click of the button, they have a complete DTAP environment. No longer they need to go to their infrastructure to get the servers. 
to their operating guys to have them installed uh, into shop, Nexus, the repo, code repository, all that kind of stuff. It's all within one blueprint. So again, we think that the application should come first, that should be abstracted, and not abstracted just in a single, like spinning up a container or spinning up a VM. No, a complete uh, business case application, so a complete environment should be up and running with a single uh, click of a button. So now they can start, if they have a demo tomorrow, for example, and they want to have a demo set up, with a single click, they have a complete environment up and running instead of having to wait three weeks, four weeks before they can start coding. And the same comes with a production environment. We now have <clears throat> an intelligent proxy in front of it, so they can have three different versions of the same shop in their production environment. And based on business rules, we can spread the load against the different versions of a business application, an e-commerce application. We signed a new contract with a New Relic last week. So the next thing we're going to do, and it's going to be there in two weeks, is feed the New Relic data. I mean, an e-commerce application is about performance. Low, uh, a longer re a response time of a page, page load time will drop your, uh, will drop your panel, your, re your, your revenue. So what we're going to do with New Relic is feed that performance data back into the, the intelligent proxy in front of their application. So now they're going to drop their new version of their Intershop application on a Thursday evening. They go to sleep. Friday morning they wake up, and from the three versions, uh, the best performing uh, uh, website will be up and running. That's the kind of intelligence and that's the kind of feedback uh, we can put into our platform since we started with applications in mind first. Right. So if you're talking about business, it's getting better quality because you can do better testing. I mean, we all want to test, but we never want to wait for those different kind of setups. We want to have uh, fast development cycles. Uh, that kind of flexibility when you do the functional deployment, the functional release, not the technical stuff. What we now see in the market is that most people, when they go to the cloud, try to solve the technical release problems of getting the application up and running in a technical way into the production environment. We try to focus on the functional uh, level. Right. So, so William, you know, being data driven, a very important piece of what you talked about there. What, what I want to help uh, our audience understand is concerns about if you talk about abstractions or mm -hmm. if you want to be able to live across different environments is can you take advantage of the full capabilities of the underlying platforms because you know that is you know one of the reasons we go to cloud isn't just because it's got limitless compute and pricing comes down but there's mm -hmm. all the new features coming out or I want to be able to go to you know a cloud provider and take advantage of some specific feature so help us understand how I can live across these environments but still take advantage of those cloud native uh, features and innovations as they come out there are, there, there are actually two ways. Uh, for most alternatives, we also have an alternative, alternative component in our platform as well. We have a complete marketplace with all kind of functionality like AWS has. But I can imagine that people want to develop an AWS and get their AWS Lambda functions or S3 buckets or that, but that, that kind of specific functionality. And going back to the uh, Intershop example, they run their application as a CAS solution on Azure. So when you want to have Azure DevOps or that kind of specific functionality included. Uh, our platform connects over 130 different data centers across the globe and Azure and AWS and OVH, DigitalOcean, they're all part of the uh, huge mix of different cloud providers. For every provider, we have what we call gateway components. We de deploy natively, uh, mostly bare metal or equivalents of bare metal within those cloud providers. And we made an abstraction layer on the network layer. So now we can in, uh, include those kind of specific services like they were part of our platform natively. Because if we would have just built a layer and couldn't use uh, the specific components of an AWS or an Azure or that kind of stuff, we would just be another hosting provider having like VMware or so that kind of stuff. We want to, and we we are aware that we need to include that specific stuff, specific functionality. And what we do with this, with what we call gateway components. So we have AWS gateway components, Azure gateways, but also for IBM, for Google specific environment. 
So we can combine the network of AWS with our specific network. And that's possible because we made a complete abstraction layer between the network of the uh, infrastructure provider and our network. So we can have the complete IP subnet, DNS resolved, I mean, as if it was running on their local uh, environment. Um, and thereby, what, since we have that abstraction layer, we can even move the workload from AWS to Azure. And since we have the abstraction layer on network layer, we can even uh, make sure that you don't need to reconfigure your, your application. I think that's the flexibility that people are looking for. Uh, if they have a specific workload on Azure and it's getting too expensive, or they want to include uh, AWS stuff, they want to shift the workload to different kind of cloud providers based on the characteristics of the specific workload. Or even if you want to have the cheapest option, you can even use your own on-prem data center. Um, so, William, you know, the, 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 there absolutely is interest in doing that. One of the barriers to being able to just go between environments is, of course, that you know the skills required to do this. So, you know, th there's something to be said about you know if I use a single provider, I understand how to do it, I understand how to optimize it, I understand the finances of it. And while there may be we similar things in another cloud or in my own data center, you know, the management tools are different and everything. So, how do we overcome you know that 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 skill set challenge? challenge, uh, you know, between different environments? Um, we had a different approach. The same as we do it on application level, we took it also on data center level. So we're going to handle most, and I cannot say all, because there's always specific components. But from our interface, you can simply go to a specific application and select the type of data center you want to run your application on. And if your application is running on an AWS, you get the gateway components with the components like an S3 bucket or a Lambda or an RDS based on the data center you're running in. So we took that abstraction layer even on that level. Um, but I got to be honest, I think 80% of our customers is not uh, interested in the data center they run their application in. Unless they have specific functionality and which is not available on our platform or they have a long running application or use a specific or they bought a specific application. Otherwise, they don't care because from a traditional application, there is no difference between running on an Azure or a Google Cloud or an IBM Cloud or whatever. The main difference is that we can make a guarantee about the SLA. I mean, an IBM has a better uptime guarantee and a better performance and a better network compared to, let's say, a digital ocean kind of setup. It's not that there is a huge difference, but it's more like the guarantee that we can give them. So we have this abstraction layers, and we try to put it as many as possible, as much as possible, into our portal interface. Um, there will no way that we're gonna re, uh, redesign and rework about the complete AWS interface. So we're not gonna include a hundred percent of their functionality. That's not possible. Uh, we are we are a small company. Uh, AWS has somewhat more uh, developers in place. But the main components, and people are asking for like RDS or those kind of specific setups, that's where we have the gateway components for available and they can include them into their old application. But we also gonna advise them why they were looking for those specific AWS components. Is it within their application architecture or is it something they just heard of? Isn't there a better solution or another solution? Um, I think since we have that abstraction layer, one of the biggest benefits is, and what we see our customers also do, is um, we incorporate their data center into our platform. And we have one huge network across all the cloud providers and including their own data center. So in the past, they had to have two different development teams. One specialized in AWS development, uh, with all those kind of specific kind of stuff, and all one development team which had more like a traditional point of view because their internal system uh, had data which was not allowed to go outside the company or had to stay within in the firewall. No. And since we have now one big network which is transparent to them, we can make sure that their code uh, 
for their internal systems, it stays internal and is running on internal systems, but we could still use some kind of functionality from the outside. We do it all on an encrypted way, and we have one big platform available. So with our gateway components, we can make sure that that data and that application type is really staying internally, and only is allowed to go internal data access and that kind of stuff, but still use external functionality or uh, ways. But again, I would say 80% of our customers, they don't care because they just want to get rid of the burden. And I think going back to what we think cloud native means is just getting rid of the burden and you shouldn't be concerned about what type of cloud we are actually using. No, absolutely, William. You know the 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 goal of infrastructure is support. Uh, you know my applications and my data, and you know we want companies to be able to focus on what is important for their business, not get bogged down in you know certain technical uh, arguments and discussions. So, William, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, really great to hear about Delta Blue. Uh, looking forward to hearing more in the future. Thank you. I'm Stu Miniman, and look forward to hearing more of your cloud native insights.